while we're talking about the work-life balance, or at least how life balances in there, I know that a handful of us are parents. Uh, I myself am a parent of a couple of young kids. And the obligations of being a parent are pretty extreme, especially when it comes if, if you feel or identify as a provider in your household. So making a change becomes, uh, at, least it was, at least for me, at this point in my life, I feel lucky because I came, I had kids later along versus earlier on, but I would imagine that'd be really scary. And so I wonder for those of you who are parents or have somebody that you are very, uh, very much the caretaker to or a kind of the breadwinner of sorts, like, how did you reconcile that in your head? How did you create, get to a point where you could make that move and feel and reconcile that feeling of, of uncertainty and, and obligation and, and not kind of back down from that? What did you do? How did you handle that? Um, and I know that a lot of us are parents here. And so I'm just curious, please. Uh, actually, Vanessa, I want to ask you because I know you've got a couple of kids and you brought this up. And I'm really curious, like, how did you reconcile it in your mind? What were you looking for? What did you need to have in place to make that work for you and your family? Sure. So I think something that really helped me out um, is the fact that, you know, I had been involved in tech layoffs and I had been in marketing then, and so I just had this overwhelming feeling as I was going, okay, it's time for me to start working again and bringing in money and to be able to support myself and my girls. And I just knew that if I didn't change something, if I didn't make a big leap and change something big about it, that I was going to continue to have these self-confidence issues because of the layoffs that I had been a part of. Um, and so I sort of, I just found myself in this rock and a hard place situation. Uh, well, what are you going to do? Because I don't, you know, I live in a high cost of living place <laughs> and I can't just move because, you know, one of the benefits of being here is that I've lived here since I was five. I have a really big network. I've had children here. And so I've developed a really strong parenting network here, um, which really just can't you can't replace that. So for me, that was like, that was just a really big piece of it is knowing that I just, I just needed to make a big leap and really bet on myself. Um, and I knew that doing that with learn, I knew unquestionably that the humans that run the show at learn are really decent humans. And so if I'm putting in the work, they're going to do everything they can to help me to get to a good spot in my life. Nicole, I also know you're a parent as well. Like how in your eyes did you reconcile some of that decision making? Or were you like, kids who, I don't even know, like they're, they'll be fine. I put out some food, they'll be cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. I'm 100% um, dittoing what Vanessa said. I think that with a thing that I really want to highlight about Learn, oh my gosh, this was a crutch in a lot of like some seriously questioning days for me um, was the parents that work and are supported at LEARN. So on the instruction and staff, there's so many parents on that side to relate to the parents who are students coming through. And so just the revolving door of support that LEARN gets and then gives is just incredible. So I think that short I mean of course you have your doubts on you know in your own home as far as am I making the right decision is this gonna you know bite me in the butt later but as far as coming to class and like having that uh, reassurance it definitely helped mute that pretty early on for me personally in the cohort as far as okay this is probably the best it well definitely is the best decision that I've ever made and so coming into the community I know I'm supporting in that aspect, which is very hard to find for a parent anywhere else. <laughs> My previous career was not parent friendly at all. So that was like a really, really, really valuable thing for me personally coming to learn. So. so it sounds like that very much was kind of a prerequisite of the decision making was that the culture of the company aligned to 
the needs that parents would be experiencing, right? So, so for you, that was a big one. Uh, Brian, do you have kids or not? I do. Yeah. Oh, you don't. Okay. Uh, I yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I know that um, for me as, as a, a father that it very similarly, like it is a hardcore prerequisite. Like I, it's the first thing I filter my decision-making through in a lot of ways, even down to traveling to conferences or whatever, whatever is like, how is this going to impact my family? And so again, I feel lucky that I came out to it, came into parenthood later on after I kind of worked out some kinks, whereas a lot of people don't, they're coming, they're making this transition and this choice, they're taking this leap in the middle of raising kids. Um, and so if I could, I want to ask one more question about this, because I do know that many people who are going to watch this, whether you're in the room now, or you're going to watch this later, are going to be coming with this as an obligation in their life. And so I'm curious, what preparation did you do? Or how did you process the choice? I want to speak specifically to that. What are you know, Nicole, you pointed out a couple of things that you look for specifically um, at, through other other members of the team that were would clearly like resonate with that cause and that need. Um, Vanessa, you talked about a few things there, but talk to me about the decision making process. If you were talking to another parent right now, what would you advise they think about process as far as them choosing to make a career transition, whether they go to learn or not? Like what? How would you recommend they process that decision making? And Vanessa, I'll start with you, if I would. Okay. Um, yeah, I think on a practical level, you need to be thinking about, you know, what's my network? Where are my kids going to be during the day? Are they going to be at school? Is there a preschool option? You know, when I started my program, my children had childcare until, um, like 2.30 and 3 p.m. And so I went into it going, okay, well, I'm going to need, you know, I'm going to need to be with the kids until five because that's when I'm not, I'm not going to be available. Um, and I had, I had plan A and I had a plan B and I'm really glad I had plan B because plan A did not work out. The so plan B was, all right, I'm going to have to find a way to pay extra for the extended childcare. But having that already preset, I knew what I was going to do. I had the ripcord to pull, had to pull it, did, made a stressful, it was still a stressful situation, but at least I had already done that pre-planning and mitigated some of that stress. Um, and just, yeah, like your community is the most important thing. So the more you can have community of neighbors, friends, if you were lucky enough that you've got family in town that wants, that enjoys watching kids and is willing to watch your kids, having that preset and just being really honest with the people that are there to support you and saying, hey, this is going to be a really wild time in my life. We're all going to need a lot. And also like pre-teaching with your kids and explaining, this is what I'm doing. I'm doing it because I want to be able to get a job have that flexibility. So this is going to be, you know, X amount of time, you know, whatever that looks like. If that is, I'm going to make you a calendar. Let's decorate the calendar together. Let's highlight, you know, these are the days that you're, I'm going to be in school. These are the days you're going to be with your grandparents or you're going to be at school longer and giving them time to process it so that they're not just going in on day one being like, what? You're not here now all of a sudden? Everything's changing like giving that time to ease that transition as much as you can. Wonderful. Nicole, any thoughts on that? Oh, absolutely. So Vanessa, number one, hit the, hit the nail on the head with the hammer with that one. So the three keys to success here is a plan, a plan for that plan, and then communication. Because I... I thought I was the only one. I'm so glad just listening to Vanessa just now, that was like, she was in my life. Um, no, absolutely. So we moved here um, that February before I started the cohort in June. I had just moved to California. Well, we had just moved to the area in February. So we hadn't yet had that community. And throughout the course of my time as a student, our plans, the, 
plan A, we got to, I think, like plan D. So it was hectic, but amazing uh, that my spouse was just, you know, awesome like she is. So we were able to lean on each other, communication. And like I said, a plan for your plan, because you might have to, you might have to get to your uh, plan D of action. So definitely, I resonated so well with what Vanessa was saying just now. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. You know, it's it's really easy to feel alone in the journey. And uh, what I loved about what both you said, uh, what both of you said, and a lot of it resonates too, because uh, my counterpart at Learn is the CEO Chelsea, and we both have kids that are best friends. And so uh, she and I can commiserate a ton on all the different dynamics of having kids together. And I will say, one of the reasons why I feel very supported where I'm working right now is because there is a shared understanding about one, how important it is in our lives, not that it needs to be important to everyone else, but it is to us. And two, that it's, that there's a, a complete empathy and understanding that that is the number one priority for us. And so everything else, including our work has to fit around that. But again, it's not that it's, it, you need to agree with that, but in terms of knowing how that gets reconciled when you make that transition probably is going to matter if you res or you are or identify as a parent or a caretaker. So awesome. That is great. And thank you for that.